was mid-August and reports of a Southern Cape Bonito bite were on. The OTW crew ran out to the vineyard to jump in on the Benito action. If you've ever fished with Benito in albacore, a lot of people do it. Just a run and gun, because the blood gets pumping, you see this school come up and just start crashing on the surface. That first instinct is to run after them. But what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna run all the way up on the beach here. These fish seem like they're holding about eight, nine, 10 feet of water. I'm gonna let the wind just drift us through, kill the engine, and just kind of stay in that one spot to a long, long drift. Oh, Chris, there they are. right there. Bingo. Perfect. Jimmy, coming over the top. Go. Keep your head on a swivel, guys, because when they come up, you just look at look at right off the back of that boat. Oh, God man, sake, see? sweet Jesus. It's gonna happen right in here again, Jimmy. So Benito are one of those fish where they seem to run in pretty extreme cycles of abundance. You can almost always count on a couple shots at them. Usually we're heading offshore to the Hooter to troll for them and then you hear about a couple being caught casting in around Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket. But the past couple years there's been a whole lot of them caught casting. They've been blitzing like Albies. So we seem to be approaching kind of a high point in the Benito uh, cycle. These must be the two year old fish. You know, those ones that were around last year came back because they're, they're super abundant this year. Jersey all the way up to the, the Cape. Here we go. Tight Jim ball. You needed that. It just got to whack right there. You see the boil right behind it. You're on, you're on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's right behind right, it, Did you see him turn? We're good, we're good. Get, get back in there, get back in there. Go down the side. Go, go, go. Uh oh, there we go. So, so many times the Benito will wait till they see the boat and then that's when they freak out. So, Chris, I'm going to go. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> very nearly doubled up there. So like I was saying, these, this isn't a big bonito. You know, this is maybe three pounds, but it is probably just one year older from all those small bonito we were seeing last year, and there were a ton of them. So we could be in for a couple good years of bonito fishing. Even for a fish that size, though, that was a great fight. A lot of speed in there. We saw that's that little soft plastic bait right there. Even though these are good to eat, we're gonna put this one back and uh, let him hope he comes back next year a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. Best way to release these fish, just getting them head first, right into the water, just like that. Give them a little jump start. That fish kicked right off. I had a whack. So close to being a double header I had a whack, right there. and then I jerked it one more time. He came right back to it, and I, I thought it was on too. After our first Benito, the bite seemed to shut down for the rest of the day. So we decided to call it and try in the morning. Unfortunately, the fishing and the weather didn't go quite as planned. So, a lot of you guys think that all we do is get out here and just catch fish, and <laughs> it's automatic. I don't think anybody thinks that at this point. It's not the case. A lot of times we'll spend days like this just sitting on the back of the boat, waiting for the birds to show up. But we have a song that helps us. Why do birds? suddenly appear every time every time you yeah. are near on the third day we took the gloves off put away the bay boat and headed out with our 32 foot regulator that had just been repowered with twin 300 yamahas all right boys what do you say and what do you say our destination today, the Hooter, a buoy that marks Way Squeeze Shoal, where it drops off into the deep water at the end of Muskegon Channel, just over three miles south of the southeast corner of Martha's Vineyard. So we just got out here to the Hooter. We came into a wall of fog, just literally a veil that right now is protecting the entire Hooter, just covering it. A lot of folks don't realize the Hooter got its name because the buoy that's out here, actually, when you listen to it, there it is. I'm gonna try to come back kill the engines, you guys get a good idea of how the Hooter got its name. What's nice about the Hooter is that you literally can go from like 15 feet and drop off a table into 60, 70, 80 feet of water. And so there's an edge there that these fish are hanging on, just like fishing out in the canyons. 
The reason people go out there is they're fishing the wall, they're fishing the temperature breaks, and they're fishing the, some of those walls that are right along the edge. Both of them are gonna hold fish. We're gonna set up here out at the Hooter guys, just off my shoulder. What are you gonna throw out to start? So we've got two, uh, these are the uh, Rapala x rap Magnum. So they're a little bit deeper divers. Uh, we're gonna start with one green mackerel color, one red white. And uh, those seem to be the hottest colors. And if they're, we see one producing better than the other, we'll, uh, we'll switch them both over. So. There was a great run of Benito in early this year in around the vineyard. We took the Skeeter across there. We were guaranteed by guys in the office that it was gonna be easy. So easy a caveman can do it. And clearly the two of us aren't even cavemen. We're somewhere below cavemen, apparently. <laughs> All right, I'm setting this out. Chris, how far back do you usually set them? Um, I'd like to go back about uh, 50, 60 feet. We're gonna pick up the speed just a tad. Tell me when you're out. I got one out. I'm rigging up the other right now. Yeah, we're gonna have to watch these. It looks like uh, there's a little bit of grass out here. Whoa! You may have popped off the back of one yeah, of no, those. That's from grass. Jimmy, let's go back. Let's go back another 30 feet from that one where. Yeah, we ran a story in our August issue, and one of the guys I interviewed for it uh, on Benito trolling said, he'll go four, four knots, he'll start there. If the bluefish are bad, he'll push it up to five. I guess so. I've always but, fished the hooter, it'd be over five, and the reason why is the bluefish will whack it between three and a half and four. Yeah, I mean, even when you're going fast, you, you can't quite outrun the bluefish all the time, but it does cut down on them a little bit. One rod out, bringing up rod number two. So one thing about Benito, Chris, is they are notorious for following, when you have a hooked one, they'll tend to bring in a couple followers. So if we don't double up, you know, grab one of these, the rods we have rigged with, uh, with a small back off jig. The back of them. Yeah, just throw it, uh, throw it out the back there, see if we can, uh, we can catch one that way as well. It's a matter of kind of like trolling the whole face of this, and then if you knock them down, we'll put a mark on it, and chances are they're gonna work a stretch a couple hundred yards long. Sometimes it's a small detail. Like when we were trolling with the current that day, yes. that was we would get our hits I agree with when you. we would troll. Oh, oh, Chris, go, go. Chris, Chris, Sean. Grab him, Chris, grab him. Oh boy. This may not be a Benito, Juan Benito. Oh, it just jumped. That's, did he jump, is he gone? I think he's. Yeah, he's not there. Yeah. He jumped, probably a bluefish. I think it was a bluefish. The way it wasn't, it wasn't ripping line. Something's back on, nope. Yep, back on. Oh. Yeah. Bluefish, just spit it out. <laughs> we got bluefish. You see, he hit it. Yeah. He was on, 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 on. I wonder if we run down the other end. Oh. Stay here. You got bait here, I can tell you that. Yeah, the screen's loaded. Tons of bait up top, some bigger fish down below. Now, they could be sea bass, they could be bluefish, or they could be bonito. There we go, oh, there, there we go, there fish. we go. That's a fish. In gear or out of gear? Leave it in gear for a little bit if that's if you can fight them like that. I can. Let's just see if we could get another one. Is he, uh, what do you think? We just came over with some really nice marks there. Uh, this guy is trying to run against us. I don't know how, Jimmy, I haven't set the drag. It's pretty tight. I've got him relatively tight. Want me to keep us in gear though, Chris? Keep or? it in gear. Okay. I'm just kind of like clamping down the line and bringing him to me and then. It is a little bonito, All Jimmy. Right. The right kind. Jimmy, I'm gonna let you grab the leader. Yeah, you walk back this way and I'll grab him. Hopefully the uh, Yamahas don't fillet him first. He's buttoned up. That's a typical bonito foot. Chris, you can keep reeling that. That'll go right. There we go. And all right. <laughs> we are on the board, buddy. Perfect. There we go. So that's the green one. Both hits, even though the one was a blue fish, came on that green today. You have the drag locked down. Initially, he made a couple of runs like, eh, you know what, maybe he is a Benito. So that's a great sign. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark on the screen right there where he is. I think this one's uh, destined for dinner, Chris. That one is a perfect size for that. I agree with you 100%. Chris was saying earlier, you basically treat these like they're little tuna. The first thing you're gonna do with them is bleed them. So I've got some water in this bucket. I'm gonna pop a couple of his gills toss him in there and just let him bleed out. And that's gonna get a lot of the blood out of the meat. That eliminates so much of the fishy taste. And then as soon as he bleeds out, we're gonna put him on ice. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna set the this bait back out. So we're back to trolling two. Pretty good, you know, only been trolling for about 30 minutes.
Jimmy, we're in 30 feet of water. We hit that fish around 50, so I'm gonna kind of come around slowly along that edge again. Perfect. And we hit it at about almost five. So we were, so you bumped it up to five? I now. bumped it up and we hit it at right around five. That one just got whacked. So by mixing the salt water into your ice, it's actually gonna get colder and, and keep things colder. And also, it keeps the meat a little bit better. Sometimes if you put the you know, salt water fish on fresh water and that starts to melt, it's gonna affect the quality of the meat. So, that guy's put him in there. He's still kicking. Woo. Back in 50 feet of water. I'm doing like what I like call a little ester. Looks like it's starting to set up back there a little bit. See the edge right along the edge here? Yeah, yeah, I think we just got out here at slack tide. I think that's it. And as, this, as the current picks up, the fishing should improve. And so I'm gonna start heading back up where I see this rip setting up and where we picked up that fish. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. Fish on, Jimbo, fish on. I'm gonna take it out of gear this time. He's We're just running. slightly in gear right now, Jimmy. Perfect. For a second, he was running at me, and that is just another one of their, uh, their signature Tell -tell moves. Telltale signs, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they definitely, they don't fight as hard as Albies, but they do freak out when they see the boat. And it is, yep. I think I got him, Chris. You can, if you want to throw the boat back into gear and get us trolling, we'll be in momentarily. Not a very big one, so it's just going to grab the leader, flip them in just like that. Might be another eater. Oh, I think it is. Definitely on the small side, but it's still a lot of fun and great to eat. And they are just really cool looking fish, man. I mean, just totally built for speed. And with that tuna shape, that real hard tail. What would you consider that, like a two-year-old? So last year in 2018, there were a ton from Maine down to New Jersey. There were a ton of eight to 10 inch bonito being caught. I mean, it was just unprecedented the number of them that were around. And this year we're seeing a lot of you know, what's it, let's, let's say 16 to 20 inch bonito. And they are pretty fast growing, so it's, these are probably those two year old fish returning. There must have been a boom in the bonito population. And now we're, we're kind of reaping the benefits of it. Well, with, with the water heating up the way it has, we seem to get these fish a little earlier. And you know, it's funny, you see up and down, I, I think I was reading yesterday or two days ago, the big cobia that was caught down in New York. And so with the water temperatures, continuing to pick up, you're gonna see more and more of these fish arriving earlier and some of these other fish that we generally don't get, like the king mackerel we were getting last year. Jimmy, as soon as I came around to that shelf again, whack. So far we've had one on the red, white, and one on the green, so no, no clear color preference after our first two fish. Jimmy, what's the limit on the um, bonito? No limit, Chris, it's they, no size limit, no bag limit. It's kinda at your discretion. Take what you can eat fresh, you know? Maybe we'll bring some out and give them to the guys at the office. Yeah. Maybe I'll kick one to a cameraman. I don't know, probably not. Probably not. And, uh, <laughs> 20 feet of water. I want to get back to that 40, 45 feet. That seems to be the line right now where they're hanging on. So those two fish we picked up running with the current. So now we're going to go ahead and run into the current and see if that makes any difference. So even though most of the Bonito this year seem to be those two-year-old fish in the two to three, maybe four pound class, there have been some five to eight pounders caught as well. And those ones, on that, this tackle will really put up a fight. I hope we can get one of them, but if we catch just, just these smaller two and three pounders, it's, uh, that's a lot of fun too. So, Chris, Chris, we're on. Fish on, boys. It's that same spot, Jimbo. Here, you Tight. grab that. Yep, yep, grab it. I'm actually gonna make a couple casts. Oh, ho, ho. See if he, he's trailing anybody. Yeah, this is definitely another one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back a little bit on the controls. Whoa, there's Whoa. the run. There's the run we were looking for, Jimmy. So this fish just made that telltale run, which is very, very typical of the Benito and especially typical of the albacore. And so I'd marked the oh, fish. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's like the canal. About the same size as Jimmy's. He's really running out the boat right now. He's going to see the boat and he's going to make things a little bit. There yeah, he is. He just saw it right there. And he as just soon did. as they see the boat, every time they freak out. It's a little bit which better. Makes Here, sense. Chris, you slide up that way. All right, I'm going to walk him in. This guy's probably closer to the first one. Yeah, he looks a little bit bigger than mine, at least. Jimmy, I'm gonna walk him right over your shoulder. Yeah, just watch that hook. Pop him in. Nice, so beautiful. That's, that's number two for red and white. Right there. 
Jimmy, you know what's nice? So, so far, there's no real established pattern. Two on the red and white, one on the green. Jimmy, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the speed a little bit. I'm gonna set these out again, because we're still right on top of it. Don't make a mess. This is, see, this is oh, why you, this is why oh, you get a blood boy. bucket, so oh, that you boy. don't boy. do that. Yeah. All right, so Although, we just have a murder wow. scene right now, because I dropped the Benito after I bled it. <laughs> so, Jimmy had a nosebleed. God sakes, it's everywhere, Jimbo. What everywhere? <laughs> There's definitely Benito blood in my coffee. I'm coming back around. We're gonna do a crazy Ivan. Uh, Jimmy, what did you do, Jimmy? I got it, Chris. You got it? All right. So what we're gonna do is a slow turn down to here, and I'm gonna come back up on that. Speed is 3.7. I'm gonna bring it up just a tad. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, oh, Chris, Chris, Chris. Fish on, Fish on. Fish on. Jimmy, that mean that's you, Jimbo. I'm gonna leave the other yeah, one for a second. Yeah, leave it in, leave it in, see if we can double up. Actually, I think we are on, Chris. I think we're double. Double up. Out of gear. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this guy doesn't feel like a panito unless it's one of those little cookie cutter one and a half pounders. This one's, this one's screaming right up, running up right up the uh, port side right now. This has to be a video going this fast. Oh. Yeah, even a small one, man. They have some, got some horsepower. Jimmy, one of the things we're not gonna do is we're not gonna rip the gill and then just hold them over the, over the boat. Beautiful fish. Little Juan Benito. Jimmy, yours looks a little better. No, he's just, just an athlete. Man, look at, Matt, look at him. He's going bananas. I've heard a lot of guys say they're faster than Albies. Guys, these are those two-year-old Benitos. Last year, as Jimmy said, they just showed up really, really small. We've been running out here anywhere between four and a half and five to five and a half. We covered quite a bit of ground since we uh, since we got out here, but Chris kind of narrowed down where they've been holding, and we got one on the last pass, and then this, this past one, uh, both rods went down. We're gonna bleed these guys out and get the rods back out. Uh, this is where Jimmy usually like rips the gill and then throws it on the boat, and then there's cleanup aisle seven, eight, and nine. Guys, I zoomed out, and what I want to do though is I want to run my radar because right now the fog just kicked back in, and instead of splitting my screen, what I'm going to do, which I easily can do on a 24-inch screen, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is with two or three clicks of the button, I'm going to go ahead and overlay the radar over my screen, and literally I'm on my chart page, I'm coming over to the menu, overlay says off, I'm going to click on that. I can overlay serious weather, grid weather, structure, radar, heat map. I'm going to go radar. You can start seeing the boats are going to start to show up over that. We're all set there. Click off of that. Going, you know, with the tide, we picked up one or two fish. As soon as we turned into it, it was one on and then a double knockdown right away. Oh, Chris, Chris, it's on. Fish it's on. on. Fish on, boys. I'm out of gear, Jimmy. So, all right, this one. Stopped. For a second there, checked a couple of lines. As soon as I got it back up, brought the speed up over five. Bam, it was on. Okay, this is about cookie cutter size for what we've been getting. Straight in, look at him go away like a scalded cat. <laughs> this, oh, no, double, sorry, up, sorry, double, double up, double up. Double up, boys, double up. Uh, oh, no, so, yeah, there, there, double, there, there. Set him up. So I was just telling Chris that I thought he was trolling too fast <laughs> he, at six and a half knots, and the rod I was holding went down, and then the other one, man, that fish tried to hit it three or four times. He had, yeah, he hooks. really, he did. He whacked it, he came back, he whacked it, he came back, and then all of a sudden I was like, I didn't take it out of gear. I kind of kept it up at lo over five knots. Oh, you just saw the boat, and he's not happy. <laughs> Okay, come on, fella. This thing is slipping out of my hands. All right, Chris. Oh, man, he's spitting, spitting up a bunch of sand eels. Is that what it was? Yeah. Early on when we started, we were talking about which color would be best. By the end of the day, it really didn't matter. Uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, that motion, that depth, that vibration. These fish are, today at least, pretty aggressive and when you first take them out of the water, you can feel the, underneath the underbelly, you can feel the pulsating of the heart pumping. I'm gonna go ahead and just right back in the water. 
<laughs> that was a, a freaking belly flop. He the last flop. minute, so he ended up belly flopping. He looked, he looked like me out off the dock at Magansett trying to dive. Whatever that was, that was a mother load of fish right there, too. Yeah, there like was. If we, I bet if we threw a spinning rod out into that mess, we'd have hooked up on that, too. Would you like to fight the next one? Would that make Dude, Matt would you a like happy match? Would that yeah. make you feel better? Would, would it really? Yeah. All right. All right. You're up. All right. Batter up. All right. So we haven't had many shoots lately where it's been good enough for the cameraman to catch one, so. Yeah, that's so true. So true. And so far, we're, oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> oh, oh, Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it recording? It's recording. Don't let it go up and down. Just okay. slow and steady. Keep it at a 45, right 45, there. Right 45. there. That's 46, Chris. First Benito. What's be a huge sea robin? It's not <laughs> huge. <laughs> Let's check in on our other cameraman. I feel great. <laughs> oh, no. Walk up the angle. I'll grab your fish. I got the tail. I got the tail. Like kind of a gentle spike. Like a rocket ship? Like a rocket sure. ship. Sure. All right, ready? Yep. You gotta go home, buddy. That was a sick release. That was that good. Was a sick release. Yes, brother. I am the captain now. <laughs> hey guys, we had a great morning out here fishing off the Hooter for Benito. Not big fish in that two to four, five pound class, but delicious eating. We put a few in the box. Jimmy made up a little slurry of uh, salt and ice earlier. This will be our last pass. Just keep us on a straight line, Jimmy. I'm not going to do anything with this. This guy's just tearing line off. Jimmy, I'm going to let you come up here. I'm going to just walk up the side. Really going to have a nice little grill session at the office probably later uh, later this afternoon. Have you ever had these uh, um, just sushi with them? Right in, like right off the boat, bleed I, them? I haven't actually, no. Unbelievable. Delicious. There you go. Whoa! <laughs> all right. I didn't follow the action at all. After we caught a few more bones, it was time to head back to Falmouth where our sales director, Anthony DeCicci, would prepare the fresh bonito in multiple ways, including smoked bonito steaks along with bonito maki. Bonito are exciting to target, exhilarating to fight, and make a fantastic table fare which makes them a great species of target in the fishing dog days of summer. <laughs>